There are three things that I want to talk about in this video. So much is going on, but let's talk about Starliner, Falcon 9, and Starship. And let's start with the elephant in the room or the spacecraft that's still docked to the ISS Starliner. So last weekend we learned that NASA has made the decision that Butch and Sonny will be coming back via Crew Dragon next year. So what's next is for Boeing to come home uncrewed. The latest development is that NASA and the Boeing teams are go for the Starliner uncrewed return and that will happen no earlier than 6.04 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, September 6th from the International Space Station, which means by then their software will be updated to allow for an uncrewed undocking. And here's what it's going to look like. After undocking, Starliner will take about six hours to reach the landing zone at White Sands Space Harbor in New, New Mexico. The spacecraft will touch down about 12.03 a.m. on Saturday, September 7th, descending under parachutes and with inflated airbags to cushion the impact. Recovery teams at the landing zone will safe and prepare the spacecraft for a return to Boeing's Starliner factory at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So since last weekend and the major decision that we were all waiting for, mission managers and flight controllers updated elements of the Starliner systems with specific information for this mission that will allow the spacecraft to execute the return. Why this wasn't an option already? Well, we we are just dumbfounded by this. The uncrewed Starliner or spacecraft will perform a fully autonomous return like it has in the past with a different version of Starliner with flight controllers at Starliner Mission Control in Houston and at Boeing Mission Control Center in Florida. Teams on the ground are able to remotely command the spacecraft if needed through the necessary maneuvers for a safe undocking re-entry and parachute assisted landing in the southwest United States. NASA is also planning to have another media briefing to d discuss more details about return operations, and they will share more on the briefing schedule and return coverage. Well, why don't we just have another briefing to hear from Butch and Sonny? So yeah, Butch and Sonny will have to wait until February 2025 to return with the agency's Crew-9 mission. They got to the ISS, the space station, in June. So, well, I hope you enjoy the holidays up there. So the next order of business that we have to talk about is the Polaris Dawn mission, an update from Jared Isaacman and how this all ties into the FAA grounding of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket once again. So we know that for the first time in three years, SpaceX had a failed booster landing. It lost its reusable Falcon 9 booster on Wednesday after it tipped and RIP. We have this incredible video. We see the booster touching down on a short fall of Gravitas drone ship, but unfortunately, after it tipped over, it was destroyed. SpaceX teams are still assessing the booster's flight data and status, but remember, this is the same booster that Inspiration4 used. So this has prompted an FAA grounding, which a lot of people are up in arms about. They don't understand why, since no public was... Uh, threatened by this, you know, this happened in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, why you would need to ground the rocket. Well, the FAA still needs to find out what went wrong with the landing. We do think the grounding is not going to take that long, and the FAA will hopefully allow SpaceX to get back to their regularly scheduled programming soon. But during all of this, the Polaris Dawn mission has also been delayed. They missed two launch opportunities, one of them due to a ground site helium leak, the other one due to unfavorable weather, mostly for the return profile. So Jared Isaacman, commander of the mission, shared a pretty lengthy update. He says the primary factor driving the launch timing for Polaris Dawn is the splashdown weather within Dragon's limits. Unlike an ISS mission, we don't have the option to delay long on orbit, so we must ensure the forecast is as favorable as possible before we launch. He says we sincerely apologize to those who have traveled to see our launch and have faced delays. Many of our guests were able to witness 1062 final Starlink mission. This is the booster that was lost. While it's unfortunate she didn't stick the last landing, the cause is well understood and she successfully completed her mission. 
1062 had an incredible career, flying many notable missions, including Inspiration 4 and Axe 1. It's remarkable to think about the life this amazing rocket led from the day she first rolled off the assembly line. When we are ready to launch, we will be working within the same window as previously briefed. So yeah, I'm going to be staying up very late. <laughs> the crew remains in quarantine, staying productive, keeping fit, and ready to launch within approximately 30 hours of receiving a favorable forecast. Space exploration demands patience, resilience, and teamwork. We are deeply grateful for the dedication of everyone involved and for the support of those who believe in our mission. Together, we are pushing the boundaries of what's possible and continuing humanity's journey to the stars. So, of course, very well written, very professional response from Jared Isaacman. And I know that not everyone here uses X, so I just wanted to read the whole thing. So we still don't have a date set for the next Polaris Dawn launch opportunity, but you can bet that I will keep you updated. Okay, and finally, last but not least, let's talk about Starship for a little bit. I touched on this during my live stream with Joe Tagmeyer a few days ago, but there's a lot of work going on down at Starbase, and most of this indicates that, yeah, they probably will try to catch the booster on Flight 5. Which is why having this Mechazilla shirt in time would be quite fantastic, which I will leave the link in the comments in the description. The deadline is Monday to order. But if you've been following any of the work down at Starbase, you will see workers with welding guns and torches... They're adding some final touches and upgrades ahead of the next flight of Starship, which we're not sure exactly when will be. My guess is mid-September. And a lot of this work is actually on the two chopsticks or Mechazilla arms, which remember the super heavy booster will slow to a hover over the launch pad and then these arms will close around Starship's booster. So it's not going to be a slipping through your fingers type of catch. They already do these types of landings with the Falcon 9 boosters. They just don't have the chopstick arms as an added component. Now, the FAA is also still reviewing the proposed flight plan for Flight 5. And so we still don't have, obviously, a launch license, but those usually come in really late and basically a few days before the launch. Speaking of the FAA, we learned two weeks ago that some meetings were canceled, and these were to talk about increasing the launch cadence. They were virtual and public meetings. The FAA said that they had to cancel those meetings and they would announce future dates. We didn't know what the heck was going on. But now the FAA has given us an answer to why they had that sudden cancellation. So get this, the FAA... The FAA became aware of allegations that SpaceX violated the Clean Water Act at Starbase, but they say, quote, the FAA was unable to confirm the accuracy of certain representations in SpaceX's license application in the draft tiered environmental assessment prior to the public meetings. SpaceX has denied these claims, calling them bogus, unsubstantiated. This all traces back to a story from August 12th by CNBC. They reported that SpaceX violated environmental regulations by repeatedly releasing pollutants into or near bodies of water. SpaceX denied this, saying that its water deluge system at Starbase uses only potable water and that environmental regulators told them they could continue launch operations. But what's really going on here? Well, Joe Tech Tegmeyer writes, it's a sad indicator of our society when bad actors can make unsubstantiated allegations and government agencies act based on these allegations before verifying they have any merit. The FAA says they were unable to confirm the accuracy of certain representations in SpaceX's license application. They postponed the public meetings until these matters could be resolved. We also learned recently that the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has fined SpaceX $3,000 $750 for an unauthorized discharge of industrial wastewater into surrounding wetlands. It's not clear what this means for the FAA approval of an increased launch cadence from South Texas. But Elon writes, just to be clear, this silly fine was for spilling potable drinking water. Literally, you could drink it. But Neil writes in the comments, actually, the fine is not for discharging anything harmful. It is about not getting pre-approval to discharge it. There's quite a distinction between the two. And I guess the size of the fine highlights that this was procedural, not environmentally damaging. So obviously, this story is still a work in progress and being told as we go. But hopefully, we get to have those FAA meetings on the books again soon because I would like to cover that and see what happens.
So also breaking news as I was editing this video, NASA has announced which two astronauts will be going on Crew 9. And we now know who's not going to be going because they have to make room for Butch and Sonny when they return in February. So NASA has announced that Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov will launch on Crew 9. Haig was previously the pilot but replaces Zena Cardman as commander. So why did they choose this lineup? Well, neither Cardman nor Gorbanov had previous spaceflight experience or a test pilot background, so they wanted someone experienced. Thanks for watching this video. I know this is a lot packed into one video, but there's a heck of a lot going on. I hope that you guys have a great weekend. And again, if you want to order my Mechazilla shirts, the deadline is approaching soon. So thank you so much to everyone who is supporting my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.